Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at a single board computer called a Banana Pi. Specifically, I'm going to compare it with a Raspberry Pi. I'll then show you how to set things up. And then I'll run some demonstrations, first running the Android operating system, and then the Banana Pi version of Raspberry. Sadly, the Banana Pi doesn't look anything like a real banana. It does, though, bear a striking resemblance to the Raspberry Pi, as you can see when we compare it here to the Raspberry Pi Model B and Model B+. This said, the Banana Pi is a more sophisticated single board computer, so let's take a look at its own individual hardware specification. At the front, the Banana Pi, just like the Raspberry Pi, has got an Ethernet connector, although here this is 1 gigabit rather than 100 megabits, and it's got two USB 2 ports. In addition though, it's also got this, which is a little infrared receiver, which means you can work a Banana Pi potentially using an IR remote control. Around the corner, we then have a standard 3.5mm audio jack, a standard phono composite video jack, and in between them, an onboard microphone, which could be useful if you want to build applications based on voice control. Next to the composite jack, we've then got these 26 GPIO or general purpose input output pins. I'm not going to try those out in this video, but as you've seen in my previous videos, you can use these to control external electronics and things like motors. Moving to the back of the board, we have two physical switches. Here we've got a power switch and also a physical reset switch. And next to these, you're going to see this um, micro USB connector, and you probably think that's for powering the Banana Pi, but actually it isn't. This is a USB OTG on the go connector, like you get on, say, an Android smartphone. So you've got an extra USB connector in the OTG variety, which is again a nice little addition. Moving on to the final edge of the board, we've then got, as you would expect, probably a HDMI connector to connect to your monitor or television if you're not using composite video. And you've also got here the micro USB connector you'll use to power the uh, Banana Pi. But as I'm sure you've already seen, you've got two other connectors here. You have got a SATA port. Yes, the Banana Pi will support up to a two terabyte standard hard drive connected to this SATA connector. You've also got here, if you're connecting a 2.5 inch um, hard drive or SSD, you've got a power connector which could be used to supply five volts to actually power that drive. Finally, on the underside of the board, you've got a metal SD card slot, and then the things that really give the Banana Pi its edge over the Raspberry Pi. For a start, there's two Samsung RAM chips here, both of which are half a gigabyte, so in total you've got one gigabyte of DDR3 memory on your Banana Pi. You've also got here the processor. This is an all-winner A20 dual-core ARM processor running at one gigahertz. So whereas the Raspberry Pi has got a single core 700 megahertz processor, here you've got a dual core one gigahertz chip. It's best we don't run our Banana Pi as a totally bare board. And so as in my last video, I've drilled some holes in a piece of black plastic and I've got some little plastic tubes and some bolts and some uh, nuts and some washers and indeed a banana colored screwdriver. And I'm going to assemble these to support the board. To make everything work, we'll of course need to connect a power supply. We need a micro USB power supply with at least an amp output and ideally an amp and a half or even two amps to power the Banana Pi. But if we take that and we connect it in with an HDMI lead, with a keyboard and with a mouse and with a network connector, we're just about ready to boot things up. But of course the final thing we're going to need is an SD card with an image on it of an operating system and so that will be our next setup step. You'll find Banana Pi websites at bananapi.com and bananapi.org, but the best place to get files is via the manufacturer website at leemaker.org. Here, if you select Resources and Downloads, you'll find lots of SD card images. We're going to start with Android, which I'll download via the Google Drive link. This downloads a 264 megabyte file in TGZ format which we'll need to decompress. Here I'm using 7-zip and as you can see 
when the tar file is extracted, this in turn needs extracting to our final SD card image. To write the SD card image to our SD card, you'll need to have installed Phoenix Card, as also available from leemaker.org in the Android Downloads section. With your SD card inserted and Phoenix Card set to the right image and drive, you'll then need to select Startup as the right mode and click Format to Normal. When this is complete, finally select Burn. This will take a few minutes, but when complete, you'll have a bootable version of Android on your SD card. Right, I've inserted my SD card into the Banana Pi, and it's now booting up, as you can see, into Android. This is actually my second boot into Android. The first one takes rather a long while as it, as it sorts itself out. I also, on the first boot, installed a couple of apps. But uh, here we are on the um, Android home screen on a Banana Pi, plugged into a television. It's quite, quite strange, actually. If I go into settings, I just scroll down. You'll see I'm definitely here running Android 422. And if I go up to the top, I just want to show you that to get this thing working with a wired connection, I had to go into more under Wi-Fi, into Ethernet, and tick that box. That took me quite a long while to find. If you don't tick that, it obviously won't give you an Ethernet connection. You could, of course, put a Wi-Fi dongle into your Banana Pi and connect by Wi-Fi. I've not done that, which is why I've got, I'm sure, this message here. If you go into Applications, you'll find this is basically Android 4. It, it's just running on this system very, very well. You've got the Play Store down here. So if you wanted to, you could go and install all the normal Play Stuff, access all your movies and apps and all that kind of thing. I've installed a few things. As I've said, I've installed Google Docs stroke Google Drive. I'm a writer. I always have to try that. And um, it works. Here is the document I was writing this very morning, the preface to my 10th book, my second 3D printing book. And there it is. Look, if the book's not out yet, you're getting a sneak preview of the first exciting paragraph. I've also installed here Firefox just because it's my favorite Android browser. And we could go to, say, the world's favorite website. There it is, look, it works. We've actually got a very responsive, very clearly working version of Android here on the uh, Banana Pi. Having tested Android, let's now try the Raspberry version of Linux. This again can be downloaded from leemaker.org, though is somewhat bigger at 1.25 gigabytes. When downloaded, the file again needs extracting, which, after a little processor concentration, will deliver a 3.6 gigabyte tar file. A second extraction process is then required to get to your final card image. To write this image to your SD card, I would recommend using the free SD formatter, making sure that under Option you set Format Size Adjustment to On. Once your card is formatted, I next recommend using Win32 Disk Imager, again downloadable via leemaker.org, to write your final media. Right, well again I've been booting up the Banana Pi, and here we are on the uh, desktop under Raspbian, although you can see they put the Banana Pi logo there rather than the Raspbian one. But we are definitely in Raspbian. We've got things like the, um, the Pi store over there, so you could go and install lots of standard and Raspberry Pi stuff if you wanted to. You can see we've got our Raspberry coming up there. And in fact, a bit earlier on, I went into the Pi store, which is still loading in there, and I actually installed uh, LibreOffice, which I'll show you in a second. But the advantage of this is, of course, if you get a Banana Pi, once you install the Raspberry image, you've got access to all the standard Raspberry Pi software. I've also on this run up a web browser for you. Here we are looking at a, oh, a book on, on Amazon. Web browsing works as you would expect it to, just as it did in Android. I've also here to be rather adventurous, actually connected in a two and a half inch SATA drive. It's actually an old SSD, which is maybe not what you connect in, but it's what I've got available. 
connected there via the uh, SATA port and the, uh, the power connector. And therefore, if I go into the file manager, you will discover that I've got all the standard Linuxy stuff, but also that is my SATA drive. Quite extraordinary, we've got that mounted on our Banana Pi. This is a drive that was taken out of the machine a few years ago, so I don't know what's on it. MISC photos, one of those. Um, oh, there we are, a picture of a, a Stormtrooper helmet model. I was making those back in uh, 2010. Well, this is presumably what they ended up like. Yes, there they are. That I was making those models back then. Also, to show you, we've got LibreOffice working here. LibreOffice Writer is the word processor. And what you'll probably notice, this boots up pretty quickly. The big difference between the, um, the Banana Pi and the Raspberry Pi when you've got this running is it's just a lot nippier on the Banana Pi. You could actually use this as a real desktop PC without too many problems at all. If I just try and load in a file, open up something there. Again, we'll go back to um, the SSD. And I don't know, again, I'm going back in time. Um, this was a book I was writing probably back then-ish. Yes, and there we are. This is a word processor working in the completely normal fashion. So there we are, just to prove to you that you can run very nicely Raspberry and on a Banana Pi, very speedy with the software, works really nicely, and you can access also a SATA drive. The Banana Pi is a rather powerful single board computer. Right now, it does cost more than a Raspberry Pi. However, the higher hardware specification does make the Banana Pi a good choice if you need the extra processing capacity or you want to connect a SATA drive. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.